That's the Lord's plan. That's what he has. So that was where the walking miracle came from. Um, Wayne never claimed to perform miracles. A lot of people, sometimes I've heard get that mistake. You know, that's not what he did. He didn't perform miracles. He didn't go out and do miracles. He was a miracle. He was a miracle of God. Just like every one of us here today it is, is a miracle of God. We are every one a miracle of God. So that's a little bit of history on Uncle Miracle and the reason about seven years ago, Wayne and I grew up together, um, went through school together, and after school went our separate ways. We were separated about 40 years. We were brought back together in a church, a little church out of the country that I go to, 100 miles of where we grew up. And we didn't know why at the time, but we spent the next seven years, six years, whatever, traveling together and I traveled with Wayne Barbie and her coach and my wife. And um, we just had a great time serving the Lord and going out on the weekends, things like that that we could do. And now we know, we found out, Barbara and I found out why we were brought back together. Because God had a plan. When Wayne was diagnosed and when we pretty much knew the inevitable. We talked about it. We needed to keep the ministry going. Barb was struggling to do it by herself, whether she could have or not. I believe with God's help, she could have done it by herself. But I said, you know what? I had started a little ministry of my own, but wasn't doing a whole lot with it, but with Wayne and working together. Um, I said, let's just throw it in, throw it together, and let's just carry on walking by the ministry. Amen. That's why we're here today. Amen. 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 The Lord was going to a song or two here, and then uh, I do have a little bit of a short message. I won't keep you all too long because, you know, Pastor said we have to. Uh, I think we said I'd be out of here by about six o'clock this evening. So. Sometimes it feels that way, I'm sure, if I'm talking. So this is, uh, just think about this song. I'll ask you a question. I'm ready to go. And I'm 
you ready to go today? It could be today. It could be before church is over. You know, we have a wonderful God. Just to know that we can go to him with the smallest of issues. We may think it's a big mountain, and it's little. It's little with God. He's real, and we serve a living God. Amen. How great it is.
And he has never failed us. He's never left Amen. us. Amen. Amen. He has been with us in every service we do. It just seems to get better and better. And it just keeps on going. The message for the day, as I come in here this morning and talking again with Pastor, everything, I had almost had to stop him earlier when he first got up there because he was preaching my sermon. I mean, he just went right into it. He doesn't know when I hit some of these parts in here, if you listen to him, we'll find out, by the way, Pastor, whether they were listening. Uh, they were almost word for word. But this week, this week I attended a funeral for a very good friend of mine. There were actually two pastors that spoke at that funeral. Probably delivered all together close to an hour long service. I walked away very disappointed. Because not one word was spoken on what I was speaking today. And that's salvation. Something I really want to talk about because it is so important. It is, and I believe that it is the most important thing that we will ever have in our life. Having our salvation. And the greatest thing about it, it's a gift. It's a gift that's offered to anyone for the taking. It's free. No charge. You know, that tab has been picked up and paid by our king. It's our gift. Now, if you look up the word salvation, you're going to find the definition is deliverance from sin and its consequences. Believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Christ. Preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. That's what we find when we look it up. Yes, salvation is a deliverance from danger or suffering. The Word gives us the thought of victory, preservation. The Bible uses the word salvation to refer to physical deliverance such as we see in Philippians 1.19 when Paul was delivered from prison. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. That was salvation. That's what the Bible thinks of salvation. Any of this is where we're saved, where we're protected, where we're given that protection. Now we think a lot of times when we talk about salvation, we think of eternal spiritual deliverance. When such as what Paul told the Philippian jailer. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. That's his eternal destiny. That's what he was given just by that. Now, the big question is, what are we being saved from? And of course, if you listen this morning, we're being saved from God's wrath. His judgment of sin. The sin that has separated us from God. That's what we're being saved from. But the penalty for that sin, the penalty for that sin is death. That's what the Christian doctrine of salvation is. Saving us from that death. Scripture refers to that salvation as a deliverance from the penalty of sin. And so involves the removal of sin. So who does the saving? Who gives us that salvation? Who removes that sin? 
God and God alone is the only one who can remove sin and the only one who can deliver us from the penalty of sin. And you'll find that in 2 Timothy. Who saved us and called us to a holy calling? Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. How did he do it? God rescues us through Jesus Christ. Once again, in Scripture, he tells us that. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. You see, Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection gained us our salvation. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. You know, it's so easy. I used to think about when I started this, and I brought me into this, of how difficult it would be to put together a message. It's so easy. Everything that we need for this, for everything outside that door, we find in His Word. All we got to go to. I don't care what kind of problem you got, it's just, it's there. The answer for it's there, the help is there, the guidance for it is there, no matter what you got. Go to His Word. It's all there. That would be the part of that. God's Word tells us that salvation is the undeserved, gracious gift of God. Undeserved. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. And the only way that it's available is through our faith in Christ Jesus. Repent. I'm sorry. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, Christ Jesus is the only way. That's it. There is nothing else. Only in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now how do we get that great gift of salvation? We're saved by faith. First of all, we must hear the gospel, the news of Jesus, and the news of Jesus' death, and the news of Jesus' resurrection. Because that's the news that we have to hear. That's what we've got to know. That's why we come to places. He said, you know, we can do a lot. We can sit down, with, but we need to hear that. And, you know, many times being out on the road and things like that, there's a lot of times when I need to hear a pastor's message. I need to get back into my own church where I can sit down and listen because we, even as disciples that we are, every one of us here, I hope every one of us here is a disciple and gets out there. But you need to be in church because that's where you're going to get fed. That's where you're going to get your ammunition to go out there and fight that world of battle that we have to fight, the one that we chose to take on as Christians. Because as a Christian, we've taken on that commitment. If we are a Christian, if we are a true Christian, a true disciple of the Lord, then we've taken on that commitment. That's what we need to do. That's kind of like one of the only things he ever asked us to do. Be a disciple for him. The second thing, we have to fully trust our Lord Jesus, which involves changing our minds about sin and about Christ. But most of all, requires repentance. Repent, therefore, and turn back 
that your sins may be blotted out. Everything that we need is in His Word. And then call on the name of our Lord. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Now, salvation is available in Jesus alone. There's a couple verses tell us about that. One of my favorites is John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then in Acts, and there is salvation in no one else but there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And it is dependent on God alone for, for provision, assurance, and security. So that's what we have to do. You know, those are the things, again, the Bible, Scripture, the Word. It's our instruction book what we need to do. I think I said one other time, oh, because some one of the things that we've got to remember, oh, we've got to change this. Men don't read instructions. <laughs> Many times. We need to go to that book. We need to read those instructions because they're there for that. <laughs> now, you know, in the beginning of this message, I said that, the, that this was the greatest gift we could ever receive and that it was free. And now I've just told you a whole bunch of things you got to do. But you know, having faith, believing in the Lord Jesus, repenting of our sins, those are the things that we need to do. But those things, they are nothing. They are nothing compared to what Christ did for us on Calvary so that we might have that gift. So therefore, that gift is free. Those things aren't anything. Christ made that price. Now, I'm going to ask this. Have you received it? Do you have that gift in your heart today? If you do, I thank God for that. But if you do not, if you did not have that gift within your heart today, I also thank God that it's still available for you. It's still available. Come and get it. Don't wait another day because you may not have it. I ask you please, in closing, do not leave this building without that gift today. If there is anybody here that does not have that gift, does not feel that they have that salvation, right there is a place to get it. And I'm sure that Pastor, myself, Barbie, anyone, any number of people out here, if you need it, could be right there in the room with you. But you have to take that step. That's the one thing. We can be with you, but we can't do it for you. You have to do it. It's an easy thing to do. Don't think that you're giving up. Don't think that you're giving up anything. Because let me tell you, as I said earlier, in the time, the 40 years that Wayne and I were separated, I went my way, he went his way. I lived the world. I thought I was doing great. I thought I had a wonderful life. And let me tell you something. About 12 years ago now, I was given a life like no other. A life that I never knew. And my only regret, the 
that it took me all those years to find. So don't wait another day to find that life. If you don't have it, get it today. Come to that altar. Come up here. Find it. If you don't want to come up here, it's something. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Again, we ask you, and I'm not really going to hammer on anybody because I don't believe in that beat you to death with a Bible. I believe that when a person's call on, they'll know when it's time. But don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. that knock on your door, that knock on your heart. Don't ignore it. When it's time, meet your needs. Because one day, every one of us will be. Every one of us will declare him Lord. Mark's going to come up and do a couple more songs. And I've got a recitation to do that uh, I didn't realize. Somebody's really uh, kind of favorite. So Mark, I'll let you do a song and then I'll go in on that and we'll close out with you. You know, the way the United States is now, mm -hmm. we need to have Jesus. That's our only hope right now. Because we don't have any hope in our country. No hope in the president. We need to have hope in Jesus. So we need to take a stand and tell the non-believers that we take Jesus.
you know, we talk about our salvation. That's what this message was about today. And different things have been talked about it and how we got it, how we get it. This is a little story that goes back a long time ago. Uh, always like this one because, as I said, John 6 is one of my favorite verses, but I believe that this is my favorite here. This talks about it. Well, it was a cold December night in the streets of Chicago. Blizzard was blowing in and people were trying to get home so they could be safe and warm. There was a little boy selling newspapers in the corner. Well, not many people were buying anything because they were all trying to get home. So he started packing it up and he noticed a police officer there and he walked up to him. He said, sir, he said, you wouldn't know where a little boy could find a place to sleep tonight, would you? He said, I live in a cardboard box down the alley. He said, it's awful cold out here tonight. Well, the policeman looked at him and he said, son, he said, I'll tell you what you do. He said, you go down the street with the ways of the big white house on the floor. He said, you knock on the door and when he comes to the door, you just tell him John 316.
still in the miracle making business today. And if you need that miracle, you just go to him and ask him. And if you need that miracle of your salvation, take that walk. There's a miracle in the making.
tell you how much I appreciate the walking miracle, especially the compliment they gave us. I didn't realize, and maybe I forgot that uh, this is where they started uh, together. I uh, doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it, does it? But I, uh, when I put the slide up, with Wayne in there, got emotional about that. Because so you get emotional about it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was a great picture. I was able to take it to another church I was at. And Wayne had a Bible in his hand, his hand way up in the air, and he was bent like he was preaching the Word of God. <laughs> and that's, he had so much energy about him, it was just amazing. And he was sick, and you would never know. You would never know. There's a miracle. And the great, great thing about that verse is there's a miracle for you, there's not a miracle for somebody else. There's a miracle for you today. You know, maybe that miracle is a miracle of salvation. I don't know. Because a lot of people, they, they don't consider that the miracle. That is God's greatest miracle. That healing from sin is God's greatest miracle. But maybe it's a miracle of a renewed relationship. Maybe there's a relationship in your life that's difficult. Maybe that's the miracle that God has for you today. Maybe for some of you it's finances. Maybe for some of you, it's just simply control. You won't let go, and God wants you to let go. And today is the miracle that you're able to let go of whatever it is that's been holding you back. I don't know. I just know there's a miracle for you. And the miracle only comes from one source. You have to believe it by faith, or you can't receive it. But our Father wants to give it to you. Willard said that uh, his only regret was he didn't come to Christ earlier. You know, I believe at seven years old, I gave my life to Christ, and I said the sinner's prayer, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. When I was 14, I had just about everything the world could have to offer for a 14-year-old boy in so. When I was 15, I was working full-time. When I was 24 years old, I was making more money than my dad ever made in his entire life. I'm almost 30. I was running big car dealerships, seven franchises, making a six-figure income. I had cars. I had money. I had everything on the outside. People would look at me and say, you have everything. You have to be one of the happiest people in the world. There's a message coming up probably around October is my guess. And I'm going to tell you now, you're going to forget it because most people are going to forget it. But you're going to remember it when I say it again. You know what's going to make you happy in this life? Nothing. Let me hyphenate it for you. No thing will make you happy. I had cars. I had money. I had houses. I had women. I had everything the world had to offer. The one thing I didn't have was peace. And then one day, I decided that I was going to do more. That Jesus was no longer going to be my Savior alone. That I would surrender. That would make you Lord. Amen. I believe that when I had a Savior alone and living my life in the direction that it was going in, that if I died at that time, even though I confessed Jesus as my Savior, I probably would split hell wide open. Because I had never made Jesus my Lord. I found peace when I made Jesus not just my Savior, but my Lord. And for those of you that know my story, you know, everything that the world had to offer, I lost. But you know what I didn't lose? Through the midst of things, the midst of health troubles, the midst of financial failure, the midst of relationship failure, the midst of the one thing I didn't lose was my peace. Because peace and happiness comes from no thing. It comes from nothing but Jesus Christ himself. So I would encourage you, even if you said Jesus is your Savior, but you've never taken that final step to make Him Lord and surrender. Let the day be the day that you start living for Him. Still living.
as we leave this evening, this afternoon, this evening, you know, it's amazing to me. Uh, I love them. They, they sent me a message. I didn't respond because that's what the Holy Spirit said to do. Their message was, do I hear the two songs we picked out for singing for the congregation? We have about a three-hour service plan. I said, well, that's what God tells them to do. That's what he's going to do. But uh, they get mad at me when I speak for an hour, so hey. <laughs> It's almost 1130. It doesn't matter who's here, who's not here. We start on time again. Mike will be at the door, but I'm assuming you, who, who would we make a check out? Walking here? Walking here. All right, if, 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 you, if God lays it on your heart, if you've been enriched, be generous to the walking miracle, Mike will be at the door and uh, just place it in the basket. Uh, if you're making a check out, make it out to the walking miracle. But I do want to thank them. I want to thank them for the love, most of all, that they show. Thank you for coming up and glorifying our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank you all for being my friends. Let me pray for you, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for being here in our midst. We thank you for the wonderful things that we each one, Lord, take so much for granted. Every day we get up. Some of us grab a cup of coffee. We get in our cars, we leave our air conditioner houses, and we get in the air conditioning cars. And Lord, even in here where there's no air conditioning, it's, it's not so bad if we can't stand it. Father, so much in this world we just take for granted. We, you blessed us so mightily. And yes, there, there's people here that, that have problems, Lord. Uh, your word tells us that's going to happen in this world. We live in a fallen world. But Lord, we know that you're offering us a miracle with that. So if there's one in here that needs a financial miracle, let them believe in their heart and accept that miracle, even though they may not see it. Walk by faith, not by sight. There's one here that needs a relationship or a health problem or whatever it is, Lord. Lord, act mightily. May your spirit be upon us. Thank each person that was here today. Let them know how much that we love them because you loved us. And Father, as the walking miracle continues in Wayne's name and in Wayne's memory, may you mightily bless them as well. May they never deviate from the word of Jesus Christ and the good news of the gospel. We ask this all in the precious name of our Savior, our Lord.